United claim classic victory, Arsenal near Odegaard deal, PSG still on the messy trail, a chance to round up and today's Emoji Monday is all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Matt Froelich, you are the World Footballers and this is the Daily News. First up, a Manchester United are through to the next round of the FA Cup after a scintillating 3-2 victory over Liverpool. In the last few years, there's loads of talk, especially in the first few rounds, that the FA Cup's lost its magic. It's not only really that exciting to watch. I don't know about you guys, that was amazing. That was like a 3-2, it ebbed and flowed, there was loads of attacks, some great defending, some very poor defending, some brilliant attacking play, and at the end of all of it, Bruno Fernandes with a stunning free kick to win the game for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side, and yet again condemn Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp to another defeat. Their only win in their last seven games has been the FA Cup third round against, well, basically a load of children in Aston Villa. Aside from this though, I'm talking of Bruno Fernandes' free kick, it was a stunner, and it was a free kick. There's so many people I saw, comment sections, YouTube, Twitter. Fabinho goes to the back of Cavani. His knee literally smashes into the back of Cavani's knee. It is a foul. It is a free kick. If he's not fouled, Cavani spins away from the defender and he's probably in on goal. So with all of that cleared up, Manchester United are looking pretty good at the moment. And I think a lot of props has got to go to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, don't get me wrong, I was the first one who was like rinsing United when they were doing poor. Yeah, you can expect a bit of flack. You can expect a few questions around the manager. Having said that, he's tactically improved massively. United looked to have set up in the right way for a whole multitude of different games. Alongside this, it's a big call leaving Bruno Fernandes on the bench against a strong Liverpool side. But then he brings him off the bench and it turns out it worked perfectly. Because he didn't start the game, he had extra time to practice free kicks and we all saw what happened there. But alongside this, Pogba seems to have come into a brilliant vein of form the same with Luke Shaw as well and all of this despite the fact that both teams had two or three first teamers missing it was just such a good game and Manchester United definitely deserved to win and that's Jurgen Klopp's men that have to turn things around quickly as they head to Tottenham on Thursday night elsewhere in the FA Cup Everton Leicester Burnley Manchester City all made it through with rather comfortable victories as for Chelsea they're also through but <sighs> If there's ever been a waste of money, it's looking like it's at Chelsea. It's a bit harsh to say just yet, but Timo Werner can't buy a goal for love nor money. He misses a penalty, whereas Tammy Abraham scores a brilliant hat-trick, and at the other end, Kepa gets his big chance to redeem himself against championship side Luton and lets in an absolute howler. Frank Lampard must be kicking himself with all these big money signings. On top of this, though, things look pretty worse for London rivals Arsenal as they went out 1-0 to Southampton, the team they face in the Premier League again on Tuesday night. But talking of Arsenal, they could do with a bit of creativity moving forward, and that is what they are looking to do today as they cross the T's and dot the I's on the deal that will see Real Madrid's Martin Odegaard join Arsenal on a six-month loan deal. The Real Madrid attacking midfielder has, well, pretty much been deemed surplus to requirements by Zindi Zidane, despite the fact that he brought him back from Real Sociedad halfway through a two-year loan. Anyway, he's now going to get his game time and can really, really help Arsenal. If you get Odegaard in the right positions, there's absolutely no doubt that he's a phenomenal footballer. That's why Real Madrid want to keep hold of him in the long term, but maybe they're just not playing him at the moment. In fact, in the news roundup today, there's a little bit of a clue as to why Odegaard isn't getting many minutes. Elsewhere, though, it means that Meza Ozil has now left the club as he finally joined Fenerbahce. But on top of all of this, there is a slight problem for Odegaard, and it comes with the squad registration. Now, you're allowed 25 players in your Premier League squad, and five of them have to be homegrown. With certain players that have left, the likes of Matt Macy, who's gone on loan to Hibs, it means that there is now one homegrown spot available. Obviously, Martin Odegaard cannot take that spot. Now, you're probably thinking, Matt, why doesn't he take Ozil's spot in the 25-man squad? He can't because Ozil wasn't registered. So there's a little bit of a crossover here which doesn't actually quite make sense. At the moment, it's very difficult. And if you're wondering why, what about Socrates Papastathopoulos? He's left the club. He has, but Matt Ryan is coming in and also taking that spot. So at the moment, the Arsenal board need to do something to get rid of one player so they can allow their new loan signing to be part of the Premier League squad. On top of this, though, there were also rumours that Arsenal were looking to bring in a brand new left-back, and Ryan Bertrand was mentioned from Southampton. I highly doubt after playing them twice in a week he's going to turn around and join Arsenal, even if he didn't play against them. I can't see a move happening this late in the season, especially given Southampton's pretty good form. But if they were to sign Bertrand, he technically could take the homegrown spot of Matt Macy, who's now on loan, but like I said before, Odegaard couldn't. Moving on then and to some, some big news, which is going to rumble on for quite a long time. I'm sorry, guys, we're talking about it again. 
PSG, Lionel Messi, the reunion with Neymar. Is it going to happen? Leandro Paredes seems to think so. The Argentine midfielder at PSG was speaking at the weekend after their victory over Montpellier and said that the chance to be coached by one of their countrymen, Mauricio Pochettino, to play alongside Lionel Messi would be an absolute dream and that the club are actively working on it. This kind of just echoes what we heard from PSG director Leonardo last week as he was saying that if there was ever a table where teams sit around and discuss their offers with Lionel Messi, PSG almost definitely have a reserved seat probably near the front of the queue. It's all of this that PSG are using to try and tempt Messi to join the club, but as for the moment, there is absolutely no movement on it. There is movement though off the pitch of Lino Messi because that's where he's staying at the moment as he currently is playing out a ban after seeing a red card in the Copa del Rey. Not the effect of Barcelona too much of the weekend with a brilliant 2-0 victory over Elche. Next up then in the quick round up the rest of the day's transfer news. Rafa Benitez has left his club Dalian in China but will not be coming back to the UK as Celtic's new manager or as Newcastle's new manager. Certainly not under the current regime at the club. Elsewhere and Crystal Palace have inquired about Leicester's Mari Gray, who runs out of contract to the end of the season. Maybe, maybe not. That is a little bit of an inkling as to the future of Wilfred Zaha at the club. Elsewhere, and on Bayern Munich's list is apparently Paul Torres. The Villarreal defender has had a pretty good season, playing every single minute of their La Liga campaign under Unai Emery. And lastly but not least, what I was talking about a little bit earlier, one of the reasons that Martin Odegaard isn't getting so many minutes is that Luka Modric is still in pretty good form. So much so that he may even be signing a new contract at Real Madrid, even though he is 35 years old. Okay, then let's move on to Friday Fields, where you guys have your predictions in the comment section under Friday's Daily News and a few of you got them right. For those of you who got them right but you're not being called out, don't worry, still counts for the same. Congratulations to you anyway. I just don't have time to read all of them out. First up, Godwin Kabenge guessed that Mo Salah would net against Manchester United. In fact, he did twice. Two, by the way, Unbelievable finishes. Very, very good finishing from Mo Salah, but it wasn't quite enough. Rido Ramlawi guessed that Juventus would seal a 2 0 victory over Bologna. And Jamal Azore guessed that Southampton would beat Arsenal by one goal to nil, which they did. In fact, it was a Gabriel own goal. So finally, we come to this week's Emoji Mondays. This is where we are on football throw a couple of emojis down over some of the weekend's hottest action. And this week is pretty special. So for the best player, I've gone for three. A hat trick. Players that were so good, I couldn't possibly leave either of them out. I say either, either three of them out. The first one, João Felix. He was brilliant for Atletico Madrid. Combined so well with Luis Suarez and now Atletico. A seven points clear at the top of La Liga with a game in hand. Elsewhere, Yusuf N. Nesri, the guy who's linked with West Ham in a big money move. Well, he did no harm to his market value with a brilliant hat trick at the weekend as well. And on top of all of this, I mentioned Barcelona's brilliant win and it was in no doubt down to the form of Frankie de Jong. He managed to grab a goal, although he just smashed it in on the line and then set up a brilliant assist for Ricky Bouge. It was just a fantastic performance from the Dutchman in midfield. Next up in the crazy moment of the weekend, it's kind of like the goal of the weekend, Basuma for Brighton. If you haven't seen it, check it out. A ridiculous, probably 30-yard pile driver into the most perfect angle in the top corner. It's insane. Just, just check out Brighton's latest FA Cup victory. And last but not least, the best result of the weekend goes to Atalanta, who went to Serie A leaders AC Milan and turned them over 3-0. A stunning performance, a brilliant, brilliant victory. That's all from me then. Let me know your Emoji Mondays down below. Check out everything else we've got going on at OneFootball here. And until next time, I will see you guys later.